Yes, AWS Panorama is now out of preview and generally available. So if you want to purchase one, you can. What is AWS Panorama? Well, it's all about computer vision at edge. So we configure it through the cloud, we configure it through AWS, and we perform all of our machine learning inference on the device itself. It's basically the all big grown up version of Deep Lens now running at enterprise scale. You can see I've got one here set up. It's running connected to this machine and it's connected to this camera. It's an IP camera from VivoTech and it's streaming an RTSP uh, data stream onto the network which is being picked up by this device. It's then performing inference over it and as maybe you can see, it's picking up me, it's a person detector. It's a simple example of what it can do. Now, the way that this works is different to the preview device, and if you wanna know much more detail about that and the preview device, then take a look at my other video, and I've also got a comparison video between preview and generally available. Now, the way this works is heavily with code and with command line. There absolutely is a console page available. You can manage the devices, and you can manage camera streams through that AWS console page. But pretty much everything else, you have to do that in code. So developing the application that you wanna put onto this device is going to be done in Python. And then you can take your Python code using the brand new Panorama CLI and the existing AWS CLI. You can wrap up into a Docker container all of that configuration and put it on over the air through the service onto the actual device running in the field. Now the way that these applications work is that you define in the service the camera feeds, the model that you want to use, the code that you want to use, then you bring them together with a graph, which is essentially a JSON file which defines which models you want to use for your application, which camera streams you want to use, and which code you want to use, and ultimately which output too. For example, here I'm using the HDMI output to display onto the monitor. You define all of those together, you wrap it all up into a Docker container using the helper functions that you've got available from the Panorama CLI, and then you can upload that, download that, you can put that all onto one of these devices. Now, I did say there, when I mentioned how that's configured, that you actually define what you want those camera streams to be. And obviously that's a big job if every single one of your Panorama devices, if you've got lots of them, all wants to talk to different camera feeds, as presumably they probably do. So there is this also this notion of an override. So when you're actually deploying the application to the device, you can actually send a manifest file at the same time into the service and say, I want to override certain values. Now, the most common one of those values to override is probably going to be the camera feed that you want to have associated with that particular application. But you can, as a developer, also expose out other things in there as well. So if you have, for example, a string, you could have a string exposed out, which you could then have as an overlay on the output. You could have the threshold, like an integer value for a threshold for the model confidence score that it's going to use to be able to detect objects. Um, really, it's kind of up to you what you do. So it's very, very flexible. You can actually put together some pretty sophisticated packages of applications to deploy out to these devices running at the edge. Now, in order to assist with all of this command line usage and code and Docker containers and all that kind of stuff that you can't actually do directly in the console, 
AWS have put together a test utility, which is a CloudFormation template which will build up an EC2 instance that you can use as both a development environment and also a way to use code to deploy to the device as well. So you can actually work with code in an immediate kind of way to be able to see what implications the changes you make to the code are going to make in the real world. So it's basically like a simulator. It allows you to test what's going to happen when you deploy the code onto the actual device itself. And if you don't have a device, then playing around with that test utility that you can just grab out of GitHub um, is going to help you to understand a little bit more about the intricacies of how this service actually works before you actually get hands on with this. So I've gone and built one of these CloudFormation templates, which actually gives me this test environment. I've gone on there, I've played around with code, and I've managed to deploy this, and I've also managed to deploy this. And this is a sample of an application running in AWS Panorama. It's actually some code that was taken from AWS's own samples, and I've modified it ever so slightly. So it's counting people. Hopefully you can see a bounding box around me. It's also counting cars. So there should be two objects currently here. And over here somewhere, there should be a label which actually says things, and hopefully it says two because it's counting the both of us. So this is just something I threw together pretty quickly. If you're interested in seeing exactly how this code works and how I deployed all of this application to this running device, then I have another video. And if you click in the link in the top corner up there somewhere, um, I'll take you to that video, which is much longer form. We go through absolutely every single part of the process of going from essentially taking the box, uh, taking the panorama device out of the box in the first place, all the way through to deploying this application. If you've got any questions at all about Panorama, then please put them in the comments below. If you've got any concepts or ideas that you want to experiment with with Panorama yourself, then put those in the comments below as well. I really do appreciate you watching this video. Please share it with anybody who you think might be interested in this. Um, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you next time.